Kim? Kim? I'm filming videos, I can't have rap music in the background. No, maybe I could, but... Let's have an honest chat about why I'm selling my guitar pedals. There are a number of reasons over the years why I've felt the time has been right to sell pedals and make a change. And I actually have three different pedals on the way out at the moment. For me, selling pedals can be as exciting as buying them. Partly because one usually follows the other, but also because it's nice to take control of your gear rather than let it take control of you. I'll just add that all of the pedals I talk about that I'm selling at the moment in this video are genuinely fantastic. And what's important here is the reasons why I'm selling them. 97% of all the people that watch our content do not subscribe. So if you see anything in this video that you think is gonna be useful to you, then please hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, what are some of the reasons why I sell my pedals? Number one, nostalgia. One of the reasons that I've bought and then sold pedals over the years has been purely because of nostalgia. For example, I could have fond memories about how I loved a certain sound that I got when I used a certain pedal. Get nostalgic and think how it would be lovely to go back to that specific sound. Or I had a certain sound from a specific moment or time in my life when I actually enjoyed that part of my life, never mind the sound. And I pull the two together in my mind and let the emotion overrule the logic. An example of this for me is the volume pedal. I'm a huge fan of the Ernie Balls Volume Junior pedal. And unfortunately, my previous pedal met an untimely end around two years ago after years of hard use. When they brought out the Volume Junior pedal, I thought, no brainer, of course I need that. I love the volume pedal. I can sell my tuner and get one pedal for the space of two on my pedal board. However, I really only use the volume pedal when I'm playing live or when rehearsing in a band space. And the reality is that I'm not doing that either now or at the time when I actually bought the pedal. As a band, we're recording and mixing at the moment rather than writing. Here at home, I elevate the board so I can tweak at leisure. And when push comes to shove, do I really need a volume pedal when I've got other pedals that can replicate the effect? Plus, I could always use the guitar volume knob. Point being, I'm selling this pedal to recoup some of the fairly substantial outlay that I spent buying it because it's a nice to have and it's something that I'm just not using. Ultimately, it was nostalgia that made me do it. Number two, pedals that work well on my own, but I can't get them to kind of fit and gel with my board. Sometimes pedals sound absolutely fantastic in isolation. They do what they do brilliantly. But the beauty of buying separate pedals is the ability to combine them to create new sounds and textures. What would a specific delay sound like when compared with a pitch shifter and a tremolo, for example? However, sometimes certain pedals just don't gel well together or certainly not for the sound that you might be after at that particular moment in time. For example, the Earthquaker Devices Hoof Fuzz is a fierce, thick sounding fuzz pedal and I've used it to great effect previously when recording with my Fender Deluxe Reverb Amp. But since switching to the Strymon Iridium for recording tones, it hasn't really worked so well. Unless I'm actually in the Fender Amp in the Iridium and I'm really extreme with my EQing, it sounds not so good. So for my current setup right now, it doesn't fit. So it's time to move it on. I stay hydrated. Okay, number three would be learning from my mistakes. I've spoken before about gas or gear acquisition syndrome, and having made this mistake in the past, I'm much, much more aware of it now. I bought the Pladask Drawme recently, having wanted one for the best part of a year, year and a half. It offers brilliant reverb options, fantastic modulation and saturation sounds, and I've been using it on my board as my early verb. In fact, I've made a previous video of it. It's a really great pedal. However, the reality is I bought it because of gas. I fixated on eventually grabbing one of these when a batch was released, and when I finally managed to snag one, I was no longer in the space that I was the year before when I first started looking into the pedal. I'd recommend it for sure, but for me right now, it's not gonna get enough use to justify keeping it on the board. I've learned from my mistakes, although I guess not buying it in the first place would have truly been learning from my mistakes. But for now, it will go to a new home. I'm gonna keep the same camera angle because I'm running out of them, to be fair. I've talked about this before. So number four is one in and one out. And I've got a strict one in, one out policy these days around gear. It keeps me in check. 
It also means my bank account and my bank balance stays out of the red. The reality is there's amazing new gear being released all of the time. So it's inevitable that we'll, I will want to make purchases as time goes by. One of the main reasons why I've sold pedals over the years is to make way for new ones. I don't see anything wrong with that, especially if you can get a reasonable price for the pedal that you can sell. Certainly back at the start of my pedal adventures some 16 years ago or so, I'll quite happily buy a second or third hand pedal, learn and use it for a few months and then trade it in with my net cost being really, really low. I guess in hindsight, that was all part of my pedal education, learning what these things did. So sometimes for me, my selling reasons are inextricably linked to my buying desires. This takes me to the fifth and final reason why I generally will sell a pedal, which is lack of practical use. Here's a bold statement for me to make. Some of the best pedals that I've ever owned have been the ones that I sold and I don't regret selling. So let me explain. Here at the Old and Old channel, we don't get sent pedals or gear. And if that ever did change, then I'd be certain to share that and, and also welcome it, please. The pit of pedal and gear money is not endless. So this means that what we have has got to be practical, not only sound great, but be easy to use and ultimately will be definitely used. So essentially, we're not gonna have shelves behind us with pedals all over them because that just isn't practical. Naming names, some of the Chase Bliss and, and Meris pedals that I've owned and no longer own are truly some of the best pieces of gear that I've ever held, seen, or heard. They sound fantastic. Their engineering feats just do so much brilliant stuff. However, for me, nearly all of them that I've owned have been impractical. They don't come with banks of presets that you can plan in, although you can buy additional gear, so it is possible, but at that point it becomes really expensive rather than just expensive. Some of their pedals are really deep, meaning you need to spend a long time by any pedal standards, working through them, understanding not only what they do, but also then how to control their capabilities. The reality is I'm, I'm reasonably time poor, as many of us are in leading busy lives day to day, week to week. I'm not overly impatient. I've got nothing against diving into a manual. However, I need to be able to pull up those sounds that I've created almost on the fly at the press of a button and not have to go back to the manual every other week to remember how I got those sounds in the first place. It has to have practical use or it could be the reason that ends up making me sell the pedal. Okay, thanks for watching. It would be great to hear from you in the comments below if any of these are relatable to you, or indeed if you have any other reasons why you sell your pedals. Join us every Tuesday for our latest video. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you all soon.